What's up, Parkview kids in the fourth and fifth grade? Welcome to our final week, week five, learning all about our indescribable God and his creativity, how he made you creatively in his image. If you are in the fifth grade, make sure that you stick around at the end of our so-and-so show today for a special announcement just for you. But now, like always, all throughout this month, you pick which sweet treat you think will melt the fastest. Choose your sweet treat. At the end of this game, everybody stand up and let's worship Jesus together. There's nowhere you won't go, nothing you won't do, there's no place I could hide, you're always in pursuit, I'm never too far gone, always in your side, when I wait for you. You're always right on time Cause you're always pursuing Always pursuing Always pursuing me Come on, let's sing Born in the air I breathe Come on, get your hands up Let's go I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop Never gonna stop Yeah, you're never gonna stop Never gonna stop chasing me You made a way for me, opened up the door, Jesus you have my heart, now and forevermore, always pursue, always pursue, always pursue, always pursue in me, let's sing, more than the air I breathe, I need you here with me. And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop Yeah, you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me More in the air I breathe I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop Yeah, you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop Jump, 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 jump You're always pursuing, always pursuing, always pursuing me, your love. And your love is chasing, your love is chasing, your love is chasing me. Let's sing that. You're always pursuing, always pursuing, always pursuing me. And your love is chasing, your love is chasing, your love is chasing me. More in the air I breathe I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop Yeah, you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me More in the air I breathe I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop 
And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me Yeah Oh, you never stop Yeah, you love me <laughs> hmm. A six-legged chicken. It's chicken for everyone. Hmm. Sheep that can shear themselves. <laughs> A pair of glasses that'll let you see behind you. Oh yeah. Beef jerky made out of chicken? Novels! Oh, this is the best idea yet! Ah! Oh, where do they come from? <laughs> so strange. Clothes that are made from other clothes! Pat Sajak, scented deodorant. <laughs> Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and we're wearing awesome mustaches. Yes, we are. Why? Because we're chefs, and every self respecting chef has a mustache. Gordon Ramsay doesn't have a mustache. Okay, that's one. Bobby Flay, Emeril, Martha Stewart. Subpar chefs. They're like the most famous chefs in the world. Below par. Okay, who are the, the above par chefs then with mustaches? Chef Louis. Chef Louis, the guy from The Little Mermaid? Uh -huh. That doesn't count. Oh, okay, what about uh, Chef Remy from Ratatouille? Oh, no, 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 those are whiskers, plus he's a rat and a cartoon, uh. doesn't count. Aha! What about the greatest chef in history, Chef Boyardee? He was a genius. <laughs> okay, you got me there. Mm -hmm. We're dressed like this because we are making an old family recipe today. Snickerdoodle soup surprise? Not your family's recipe. Uh -huh. An old family recipe from someone who knows stuff. Ooh! Bonjour! Come on in, have a seat. Oh, this is cool. Tell us who you are and what you know. I'm Madeleine Lemold, but I am called Maddie, and I know quite a bit. I know every runner of the Tour de France for the last two decades. I know how to put together a Bugatti racing engine, oh. but I am also known for what I can cook. Great, you're a cook. <laughs> Quoi? No, 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 no. I am a chef. And, by the way, I do not have a mustache. It, it suits you. Merci. So, uh, what, what are you going to cook for us today? Le poisson! Le poisson? <laughs> le poisson! Oh, I love le poisson. Oh, me too. <laughs> but no. We are making a 250-year-old recipe passed down in my family for generations. Ooh, sounds mysterious. What's the recipe for? French fries. Pop. You know, I heard that uh, French fries actually originated from the country of Belgium. Oh, so they're really Belgian fries. Yeah. No, they are French fries. Yeah, but if you look on the internet... They are you're... French fries. Okay. Some people like to peel the potatoes. My family's... The pea leaves the skin on. Now we cut them. All right, where do we... Voila! Start. You batter the fries. All right. Oh! 
This batter is what makes these french fries so special and so delicious. <laughs> this batter is made with flour ground from the wheat kernels from the finest wheat fields in France. <laughs> and then we add a precise amount of white grape juice squeezed by and directly into the bowl. Mm. And then, of course, this batter contains the Perfect blend of our secret family herbs and spices. Mm, yum! Better up! You yep. put the duck fat in the pot. All right, this is duck fat? Yes, of course. <laughs> what else would you cook in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, Chef Maddie, uh, is there uh, is there like a recipe or something in a cookbook or on the internet that in case anyone wants to try this the at home? The internet? A cookbook? Quoi? No, 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 no. This is a secret family recipe. I was taught this recipe by my father, who learned it from his mother, who learned it from her great aunt, who learned it from her great grandfather, Chef Jean Baptiste Honoré Le Monde. Did he have a mustache? We do not. Tell people the secret of the recipe because then, then everyone would know it. Well, I just thought that if the recipe is, is so delicious that you would want other people to know it so they could, you know, share in the deliciousness. Huh. This is something I have not thought about. It, it has always just been a recipe passed down in my family. Oh, well, I can't wait to pass it down my throat and to my belly. So are we going to cook these Belgian fries or what? Yes, of course. You must bake them bit by bit at 375 degrees until they are golden brown. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you, you're sticking around to watch us cook them, right? Oh, I'm afraid not. No, I... I do not think I can keep this recipe to myself any longer. Everyone should know, no? No. I mean, yes. I mean, what? Be on the lookout for Chef Maddie's cookbook where all of my secrets will be revealed. Magnifique! Oh. Bye! She didn't even say bye. Well, she's in a hurry. Do you, you want to put these in the oven? Wee <sighs> wee. Oui, oui. Oh, you speak French now. No, 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 no. I, uh, I have to tinkle. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <sighs> ah! Oh! I had to tinkle and. Put on some skin. Ow! It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. What's that delicious smell? Oh, we're cooking up some French fries, Kellen. Yeah, they should be ready by the time the story's over. Mm. Well, let's get to it. The story today comes from Jesus' most famous sermon in the Bible. And since Jesus preached this sermon from the side of a mountain, today we call it the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon from the Mouths? I thought all sermons were from the mouths. No, the Sermon on the Mount. It's short for mountain. A short mountain is called the hills. Okay. So everyone, this is my friend Horvath. Um, I'm guessing he's here to help me tell today's story. Thank you for having me on your shows, Kellens. I am Horvath, and I am an expert in combining the mental trainings of learning the Bible with the physical trainings of making your muscles bigger. Perfect. So I'll tell the story, and Horvath, you give us some exercises to help us remember it. All right, let's do this. Okay, so Jesus was talking to a crowd of people from the side of a mountain. One of the things he said to his followers was this, you are the salt of the earth. Ah! First exercise! Okay, we are going to make salt for the earth. All right, so I put my hands on my hips like this and then rotate around. Click, 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 click. This is called the salt grinder. We do it 24 times. Ready? Go, one. Click, click, click. 14. Click, click, click. Elastic girl. Click, click, click. Three hole punch. Click, click, click. 24! Hey, we make salt of the earth. <laughs> okay, that was fun, yeah. but what do you think Jesus was talking about when he said, you are the salt of the earth? Oh. 
Yeah, so when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, I'm pretty sure he wasn't saying we actually taste like salt. But salt is used to make food taste better, and salt is used to keep certain foods fresh. So maybe if we're the salt of the earth, Jesus was saying that we have the opportunity to make the world better somehow. You see? <laughs> okay. Um, Jesus kept going. He said, you are the light of the world. Ah, second exercise. We are not salt anymore. Click, 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 click. We are lights. So let us pretend to be lighthouses. Stand straight and rotate your head like a light all the way around. I call this, turn the lights on. We do it 137 times. Go. One. 26. Grape nuts. Willie Shoemaker. 137. Oh, what's next, Kellens? Right. So first Jesus called people who followed him salt, and then he said we were light. Well, what do you think that means? Oh, no, don't, 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 don't do that again. No, no, no. Here, uh, maybe this will help. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. People don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl, right? Right. Right. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they'll see the good things you do, and they'll bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. I think I understand. You do? No. Ah, that's okay. It can be confusing sometimes. Jesus was saying that if you are someone who trusts and follows him, you should live in such a way that brings light into what can sometimes be a dark world. You should be looking for creative ways to do things and creative ways to love others. And when we do that, it will point others to God. All right. Let's do this. Seventh exercise. I call this one ladders to heaven so we can point people to God's. Okay, so we raise our hands and legs is at the same times, just like we are climbing the ladders to heaven. And then when we reach the top, we point like this. Huh? Okay, we climb 45 of the ladder rungs. Go! One, 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 six, 45! Now point to God because he is the most important. Ah, ah, I think I need to take the elevator. Ah. Good idea. Bye, Horvath. Ah. Going down. Ah. 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 Well, just in case that wasn't clear, it boils down to this. You have the light inside of you, and it's up to you to decide how to use it. You can keep it to yourself, or you can let it shine. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, what are some ways we can shine our lights? Oh, there are so many different ways because everyone is so different. Sometimes it's as simple as being nice to someone. Anyone can do that. But sometimes you need to use your own unique talents and abilities to point people to God. What's important is that you don't keep it to yourself. I mean, do you ever think about how you'd feel if someone didn't point you to God? I feel so left out. Yeah. Jesus has been such a big part of my life. I want everyone to know him. Exactly. You're the best, Kellen. Thanks for shining your light. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Let's do it. All right. Reveal the question. Who first told you about God's story? What a great question question because those were people who shone their light to us. For, for me, it was a, a, a guy named Brett in my senior class at high school. Oh, cool. For me, it was my, my grandmother. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. For me, it was my mom when she took me to Sunday school for the first time. Awesome. Are the fries ready yet? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yum. Yum, too. Also yum. Oh, these are amazing. Yeah, good. We gotta tell people about this. I think you're right. I think we should. No, now! 
We need to tell people right now, hey, everybody, you got to try this. Okay, we'll see you guys next week for another so-and-so show. Oh, it's all good. Try it right now. Right now. John. John. I'm ready to get ready. I'll be running. You do the spin. <coughs> All of them. Go go. Go. All right, Parkview kids in the fifth grade, thank you for sticking around. This is a special announcement just for you. Starting next week, you get to move up. You get to move up to Parkview students unscripted. They got some great things going on. You're a student now, fifth grade. No longer a kid, a big boy and a big girl student, okay? Parkview Students is so excited to have you watching Parkview Students Unscripted. It's a great show. It's an unscripted show. You can literally see anything. They have games, funny skits, and even you can maybe even text, I want pizza. Okay, I've heard people win pizza at Parkview Students Unscripted. Okay, so starting next week, Parkview kids in the fifth grade, moving up to sixth grade, you get to watch Parkview students unscripted. Our bottom line for week five, fourth and fifth grade is God created you to share his story. He wrote the most amazing and creative, indescribable story right here in this book we know as the Bible. And he wants you to share that story with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. So right now, fourth and fifth grade, here's what I want you to do. Think about one person, just one, that you can share God's story with, and then we're gonna pray. Think about that one person right now. You got it? All right, let's pray. God, I thank you so much for these fourth and fifth graders. I thank you that you love them, that you created them in your image, and that you want them to share your powerful, amazing, indescribable, and creative story. I pray that you would give them the boldness and courage to share that story with that one person or maybe those many people that they have in their mind right now. I pray for boldness and courage to share your creative story. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Parkview Kids. So we're going to spend about two minutes doing just that, praying for that one person or many people that you can share God's story with. I love you guys. I'll see you next month. Bye.